Full integration with Windows with the latest update for the Quest platform on V72. Android XR with a big focus on productivity and Apple even trying to rename XR to Spatial Computing. It's clear that the main goal and focus of the companies in the XR space is to actually be able to work and do everything in VR instead of just gaming. But as promising and appealing my sound to actually have screens everywhere to work with in VR, is it really the future? Is it possible and doable right now? Realistically speaking. Hey Tai here, so welcome to the VR Tech channel. Well, let's discover it together in this video, comparing the different platforms and see if we can do it. So, well, let's get into it. First of all, visual comfort is kind of a very important part of VR. And yeah, you may know that wearing eyeglasses in VR is kind of uncomfortable, even with the glass spacers usually provided. They're gonna put pressure on your nose, and also your glasses might scratch your very important lenses. That's why this video is sponsored by VR Wave, as the prescription lenses can actually fix all the problems together, even if you don't have glasses. Their lenses are tailor-made to your prescription and you can simply attach them to your headset thanks to the magnetic design. And you can also choose a blue light filter and anti-glare filter as an add-on to protect your eyes and make your working in VR experience even longer. As the anti-glare filter reduces the light reflection from inside the headset, providing a better image quality and the blue light filter can block the blue light which can affect your sleep and arm your eyes. Ordering is super simple, by the way. You can go to vr wave.store and make your purchase with your eye prescription online worldwide to your home. Also, it's a holiday season and from today to the 26th, we can actually have 10% discount on every single order and when you order the lenses, the 50% discount on their strap. So yeah, if you need it, do it fast. I'm gonna leave the link in the description below, but of course, thanks to VR Wave for sponsoring this video. All right, I wanna start with the MetaQuest 3 platform. This is not the first time we can actually work in VR. There were different applications that were letting us do that before, like virtual desktop or immersed. But this time, what changed with V72 is actually the ability to have it kind of integrated in the system. As you can see, now is realizing that I have the app working on my PC for remote desktops. So even while I'm using my headset regularly to go to the store and pull like my windows around and everything, do my social stuff or whatever, uh, browsing the web, I can actually still use my virtual desktop. And clicking on it, if I have the app available on the PC, it's gonna become a very seamless experience. What's the cool thing over here is that we can actually have three different displays at the same time, and you can kind of turn off completely the displays that we're using on the PC. So, yeah, it's gonna kind of substitute it. We are gonna have this big canvas in front of us to actually use our PC. What's particular here? Well, uh, the screen resolution is actually capped at 1080p. That is not the highest, but to be honest, is enough to actually work on uh, Premiere Pro, that's what I usually use. And then the nice thing of having additional monitors is instead of going to the desktop all the time, you can actually pull your different windows or, you know, to read some uh, VR news all while you're actually working. And the cool thing being integrated in the system is that you can still use all the windows of the operating system as you want. Keep using your headset. Is this doable? Is this possible to actually work in a situation like this. The resolution is barely uh, the correct one, to be honest. Uh, the pass-through is high enough to actually see your keyboard, so it's good, but the moment that you actually grab uh, your phone and you start to do something on it, it might not be uh, the best, to be honest. This is the situation, you're gonna see them as a different monitors, as you can see, five, three, four. And what's very cool over here, that if you actually move the window around, so snap it out of the dock in a different position, uh, Windows is gonna realize it, as you can see, and move it. So you're not gonna lose your cursor or the time and you can actually move between all the monitors as it might feel uh, with the mouse. And that's super cool, look at that. Uh, I just realized it, I thought that I wasn't able to do that. And we'll update in a bit. Here we go. And now it's on top. That's awesome. But yeah, is it good with the Quest 3? Well, I have to say the resolution could be higher, of course. And also the comfort is not the best. It's still a big 
headset on our face, but the ability of having this seamless integration is absolutely fantastic. Also, the downside is something that doesn't happen with the Vision Pro is the fact that we can actually control our headset with, you know, the mouse and keyboard connected to the PC. There's no pass through. It's something that Apple really nailed in their ecosystem. To try this, uh, because I was very curious, I actually picked up a MacBook Air M1 with also a broken screen, because why not? I'm gonna use it in VR anyway. Uh, so let's see how it works, shall we? All right, and if the integration with Windows felt seamless, well, that's because they kind of copied what uh, Apple is doing with the Apple Vision Pro. As you can see in the moment that uh, you see the keyboard, we're gonna be prompted with this. You click on connect, the screen is gonna turn off and uh, with a very visually appealing transition, uh, you're gonna be prompted with this big ultra wide screen. You can change actually the settings. It can be a standard screen, a wide of ultra wide. In my case, I'm using an ultra wide because why not make it even bigger over here, as you can see. So the size that you want and you can move it around as you can do on the Quest platform, of course. What's a nice thing here? Well, the resolution of the Vision Pro is very high. 3660 by 3200 and it's a micro LED display so the colors are absolutely stunning over here. Uh, the latency is very low and what's cool and we were saying is the fact that you can actually use the mouse to interact with the you know, this system, the operating system of Vision OS. So potentially you can open a browser over here uh, and put it over there and uh, still use your mouse and keyboard to move it around. And then when you need to open Premiere or DaVinci Resolve on your big screen, uh, well, you can do it without any problem and still like uh, use less computational power from the PC and outsource it directly uh, to the Vision Pro to watch a video or do whatever you wanna do. And that's super cool. Also, little perk, you can actually double the resolution if you want even more screen estate to 7680 by 2160. That, that, it's absolutely insane. And let me show you the timeline with a screen like this. Without zooming, I can actually manage like 14 minutes of a timeline. It's insane really insane. <laughs> so yeah, at this resolution, does it feel like a, a regular monitor? Well, yes, it does. It looks absolutely stunning. And to be honest, even better than my actual monitor. Uh, so you kind of solved that part of the puzzle, but we still have a heavy VR headset that is modded with a top strap to actually be a bit more comfortable than usual. Also, the pass-through is high resolution enough to actually look at your phone a bit, but it's still not high enough to feel like real. For that, we might need something a bit more X-real. I didn't expect them to be as good when it comes to productivity. Uh, I usually use smart viewers to just play games and something like that. But lately, uh, with this one, with the new ultra-wide option, things got absolutely fantastic. That means that we can have a 3DOF monitor in front of us, and it's gonna be locked in 3DOF, so you can actually look around. It's gonna be uh, like a a regular monitor in front of us that moves around, but the idea is to have an ultra-wide in front of you that stays still in place right on top of our laptop. What's cool is that the connection just needed is one single USB cable. You don't need additional batteries. You don't need any Wi-Fi connection to actually do it. And while the resolution is 1080p, so it might not feel high enough, I actually found it very usable uh, to interact and actually work on it without any problem with a timeline that also here can get very, very big. Maybe we don't have the same resolution to have a 14 minutes timeline to actually edit without moving around, but it's still absolutely usable. And to be honest, it's the thing that surprised me the most about these classes. They don't have very high FOV, actually just 50 degrees. They don't have a very high resolution because it's 1080p, but the PPD, so pixels per degree, is actually as high as the Vision Pro for the section of the screen that you see. So yeah, working on that monitor is absolutely fantastic and uh, they're not as heavy. But yeah, here we have it, guys. These are the different platforms to actually work in VR right now. Is it something doable? Yes, 
It is doable for portability. It's absolutely fantastic. It might give you much more screen estate than just a, a little laptop if you are on the go. Of course, if at home you have a, a big setup like this one with the monitors like you want, uh, it might feel a bit constricting. But for portability or if you want to work on the couch or on the sofa or the, dark, the same thing, it starts to make actual sense. Of course, working in VR is not just using your PC. Bear in mind though that the interaction that you have with the headset is not good enough to actually write something or do different tasks. So you might still need a Bluetooth keyboard for it and the mouse to be more productive. I'm very excited for what is coming. Uh, unfortunately, the Quest Pro wasn't the productivity headset we were all expecting to be, uh, but the Quest 3, the Vision Pro of the X3 LT1 really have some capabilities for it. I think that the most important thing, by the way, is comfort, and only these small glasses actually achieve it because having a big headset on for more than eight hours is not uh, a good idea. At the end of the day, it's one and a half, two pounds right on your neck every day. Also, comfort is not just wearing it, but also visual comfort. Comfort, and while lenses are getting very, very good, resolution is not high enough on all the headsets and uh, those with a very high resolution is very expensive. So something to take in consideration. Also pass-through is very important, be able to be connected with the external world and something like the the one actually doesn't have a pass-through because you can see the real world with uh, your real eyes. So it feels more usable in public places. But yeah, is there a perfect platform yet to work in VR? I will not say so, but we're getting very close. All the pieces of the puzzle are getting together. And I think that 2025 will be very exciting for it with all the new hardware manufacturers and also, you know, big companies getting in the race. Hopefully they get in the race also for gaming because we still care about it. But anyway, do you work in VR? You're trying to do something VR or is it just a novelty of it? Let me know in the comments below. Of course, my use might be different from yours. I use a lot of uh, editing softwares, that, so I need a lot of estate. But if you need to do some emails and note taking, well, that might be completely fine. So is the laptop, I guess. But anyway, guys, let me know your experience. And as always, if you liked the video, like. If you did like, please like. Subscribe to the channel for more VR tech. If you really love the channel, join the button there. Little on the further, also the Patreon. Thanks to all the patrons who join the channel, of course. See you guys in the next video. Thanks for watching.